I thank you for yielding the time, and I'll be very short. Uh, let me say to the, my colleagues who oppose this bill that this does not repeal the entire law. This just repeals that portion which is not actuarially sound. We did, vote for, we did vote for an insurance program, but we voted for one that was functional and, again, actuarially sound. Now, make it clear, this does not repeal Section 205. Those that built below code or in flood zones knowingly violating local code will still pay the penalty. This is for 207 for folks who have never flooded, who've done it right, who've built behind flood protection to code, and yet in some cases, because of actuarially flawed methodology, they will be paying up to $20,000. Now, by the way, I did vote for this bill, but not to force an inaccurate, dysfunctional system, which the GAO has, has criticized, upon homeowners that are trying to live their life. There should be sanity and fairness, but that sanity and fairness should be addressed to having something which is actuarially sound. Now, one of my colleagues said, wait a second, some will pay less and some will pay more. Actually, some may pay less, next year pay more, and then pay less again because they're being judged by systems which, again, are not sound. We speak so often in here of bringing certainty to business. Let's allow business to know what's going on. Why not have that same principle with homeowners? Let's get the actuarial process in which we judge their risk sound, then we can tell them their premium is high, their premium is low. Right now, we're telling them it's going to fluctuate up and down because the method by which we judge them is so uh, poorly designed. So I do urge, I do urge, I do urge passage of this amendment, both for the sake of proving we can have functional government as well as for the sake of these homeowners who are going to be terribly affected if we do not do so. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you.